time to review another soundtrack. And since I did the first Rescue Rangers game, we might as well finish the series and do the sequel. I'll preface this like I do with all my rankings, with the statement that this list is just my opinion. Feel free to agree or disagree. I respect your opinion, so please respect mine. And feel free to give your take and your opinion on the soundtrack and the differences between my rankings and yours. So, without any further ado, let's get on with the list. Number 9, Western World. What the fuck is up with all that whistling? It not only sucks, but it's way too constant. It's, it's like a hot cast iron against my ear. On the whole, the song does a good job of capturing the western vibe, although it's really got some generic, stereotypical riffs that are pretty unimaginative. It does get your toes tapping, but it would be so much better without all that stupid whistling. Number 8, Clock Tower. This song is just kind of a mess. It's a bunch of noodling for the most part. It kind of reminds me of Zone B from the last game. Like, the playing of it is good, but nothing in it grabs me. It's just kind of there, it's happening, and in the background. Number 7, Stage 4. The riff in the first section, the opening section, is pretty grating. It sounds like a computer taking a piss with all this digital splashback. But it does get a little bit better as it goes along. I like the atmosphere of it overall. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of uh, nice percussion all throughout. I like the choppy patterns early on with all the rapid hi-hats in contrast to the slower paced melody. I do have a thing for that type of shit. And even with a lot going on in the percussion, there's still a lot of space melodically. They left a lot of room for the song to breathe. But I just wish that it was a little bit better. I, like I said, the first that, that first section really kind of brings it down for me as far as how the song holds up in comparison to the rest of the soundtrack. If they would have had a better intro section and maybe added another part to it, this one would be a little bit better. Number six, stage two. It's a pretty cool riff, but there's not a lot to the song. Even the second half is mostly just a variation on this main riff. So it, this song doesn't really go anywhere. It really is just giving you different versions of the same riff over and over again for the most part. Although it does have a nice section at the end that transitions back into the main riff. That's pretty cool, but kind of like stage four, this song, and, and maybe more so than stage four, that this song was in dire need of another section. It was lacking in variety. Cool riff, though. Number five, stage five. It's a haunted house stage, and I think it's trying to be spooky, kind of, but it's a piano bar boogie using an organ sound. So I don't think it really gets the job done on that front, but it is a cool song, and kind of like stage two, I like the end section a lot. It's a nice way to wrap it all up. Probably the first song on this list that I like from front to back. It kind of sort of fits the stage, but that doesn't bother me too much, and you know, there are plenty of Haunted House levels in just about every platformer, so... It's fine to throw a curveball every now and again, especially in 1993 when the NES was in the twilight of its existence. Number four, stage one. It's a nice little piece to open up the game. It's not the most memorable song in the world, but the riff in the main verse does have a tendency to stick in your head. It has that infectious pull to it. Not the catchiest in the world, but it does catch. One thing that does hold it back though a bit is the choppy, abrupt cutoffs with the instrumentation. Like, there's not enough decay. It doesn't sustain. You know, this is fine in the second half of the song, because there are a lot of notes being played, so I don't mind that at all, but in the first half, there should have been 
a little more sustain in certain notes. And really, more than anything, it's the same amount of sustain or lack thereof. So they, they, they all sound very redundant. And it's one thing that is lacking in this soundtrack in comparison to the first one is the production. It's not quite as good. This is one of those nitpicky things that is a difference. Number three, stage three. Now speaking of catchiness and catchy hooks, this one is more catchy. It's it's a little bit on the repetitive side, but it's not too repetitive either. Like not quite in the same vein as stage two. At least you can tell the difference between the sections a little bit more in this one. It would have been a potential competitor with the top of the list if it did have a little bit more, like maybe a bridge between the first and second section. But I find this to be one of the catchier songs in the game. Number two, Future World. The main verse is probably the coolest riff in the game. The second half of the song isn't quite as good, but it stays the course. It's steady, consistent, and solid from front to back. I'm glad that they didn't get too uh, fixated on the gimmick of the future and try to make it sound futuristic and what would seem like the future of music in the through the eyes of somebody making a video game song in 1993. It probably would have been bad. Because I think that's one of the problems with Western World is that they relied heavily on trying too hard to make it sound Western. And you could have had a Western sound to it without relying on generic Western riffs. While the composition of Future World was concentrating more on just putting together a good song. Just a good, solid, straightforward song. I mean, yeah, it could have had a little bit more elements of, you know, futuristic and sound that sounded future-y, but better too little than too much. Number one, Stage 9. Now while this one is not nearly as good as Zone J in Rescue Rangers 1, this one also has that menacing, this is the real deal, final stage type theme. The middle section in particular is probably my favorite. pretty simple and straightforward. I mean, a lot of this soundtrack is way simpler than the first game. The first game had a little bit more complexity to the music, but I think in this game, when they tried stuff like that, it failed, or at, le or at least it didn't succeed as well as they did in the first one. Stage 9 is kind of like the opposite, where they didn't shoot for the moon with it, but they did a fine job. Didn't become a classic but still a really good final stage theme. I think though, again, going back to the production of it all, if there was better production in the soundtrack, this one would have had a shot to be among the more underrated NES songs. But even with the production that it got, I still give it a solid thumbs up. So that was my ranking of Chippendale Rescue Rangers 2. Here's a quick recap of the list. Number 9 was Western World, number 8, Clock Tower, number 7, Stage 4, number 6, Stage 2, number 5, Stage 5, number 4, Stage 1, number 3, Stage 3, number 2, Future World, and number 1, Stage 9. So, what did you think of the list? What is your opinion of the soundtrack itself and how would you rank them so that wraps up this particular soundtrack we'll see you next time